Now, if you've spent any time working with wood pallets, you've probably noticed some markings and labels. But what do these labels and markings actually mean? Stick around and I'll explain. Wood pallets first became really popular during World War II and revolutionized the ability to ship large amounts of goods from place to place. Wood pallets are generally built near where the goods themselves are produced using local lumber. Then they're shipped all over the world and reused again and again and again. Now, because those pallets and that wood is being shipped all over the world, we've run into some problems in the past where an insect or a mold species has traveled on a pallet from one place to another place, one place where it maybe has natural predators to another place where it doesn't. One of the best and perhaps most tragic examples of this is the emerald ash borer. This is a wood destroying insect that attacks ash trees. In Asia where it originates, there are natural predators that keep the insect populations under control. But in the early 2000s, ash borers were accidentally introduced to the US through shipping pallets. Ash borers bore into the tree in between the bark and the wood, making it difficult for the trees to move water and sugars up and down the trunk. I have a piece here of ash that was killed by an emerald ash borer, and you can see the telltale signs of the insect boring into the wood between the bark and the tree. It's estimated that over 100 million ash trees, that's 100 million ash trees in the US and Canada have been killed so far, and it's now starting to affect Europe as well. Now you might say, Dave, now what does that have to do with pallets and with pallet symbols? Well, because of things like the ash borer, an international agency was set up called the IPPC. Now, this is an agency that was created to establish guidelines on how wood pallets should be treated to avoid the transference of invasive species from one place to another. They've also established standards of how pallets should be marked so that you know where they came from and you know how they were treated. So here is an example of a standard pallet label. This part here is the IPPC stamp which means that it conforms to international standards. If a pallet does not have this label, it generally means that it was produced for shipping domestically and isn't going to be sent internationally. This label here tells you what country the pallet came from. You can find listings of what all of the two letter codes are on the internet, but here are a few examples. This pallet here is from the United States. This pallet here is from China. Here's one from Mexico, Vietnam, Thailand, Korea, Turkey, and India. It can be kind of fun to see how many countries you can identify. I collect them. The next section of the label is a set of numbers or letters. And this is the code of the producer or the company that is treating the pallets. And again, something that you can look up if you needed to. Now the next part are these letters below. And this might be the most important part of the label itself because it tells you what was done to the pallets. Now there's a number of different codes here, but I'll tell you about some of the most common. Now the first is HT. HT stands for heat treated. Basically they load up a bunch of pallets into a large kiln and heat the wood for a while. The purpose of heat treating a pallet is to sterilize the wood and kill any insects, fungus, or molds or anything like that that may be present inside of the wood and it makes it safe to transfer from one place to another. A temperature of around 133 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 degrees Celsius for at least 30 minutes is enough to sterilize the wood and make it safe to be shipped. Now there are other markings you may see as well. There's another marking that's KD, which stands for kiln dried, but it's essentially the same thing as heat treated. Another symbol that you're gonna see is MB. MB stands for methyl bromide. Methyl bromide is a chemical that's used to fumigate or sterilize pallets. Methyl bromide is a colorless, odorless, non-flammable gas. It can be produced naturally by some plants and marine organisms, but is also manufactured for agricultural and industrial uses. Methyl bromide is toxic to humans and according to the CDC, can cause eye, skin, and sinus irritation. There is a question out there as to whether or not methyl bromide treated pallets are safe to use. Now I've created a whole video exploring that point. So if you wanna check that out and have that question answered, you can check that out here. There are also other labels that you may see but they're uh, much less common. One of those is the initials DB, which means that the wood has been debarked. Debarking is important because the bark is where most wood destroying insects hang out and it increases the quality of the wood used if you remove that bark. Now, most of the wood used in pallets has been debarked, and so I honestly don't know why it's important to note that on the pallet, and I suspect that they don't really use that label very much anymore because I rarely see it. There are a bunch of other markings as well. You may see pallets that are marked with the initials EUR 
or EPAL. These are pallets that are manufactured in Europe using European sizing standards. These also generally would have the IPPC label if they're shipped internationally. If you're outside of Europe and you find an EUR label without the IPPC label, it means that these are older pallets that could have been treated chemically. So be careful with those. The last category are colored pallets. These pallets are generally either red or blue, and they're marked this way because they're actually rented. There are two companies that do this. The blue pallets are from an Australian company called the Commonwealth Handling Equipment Pool, or CHEP, and the red pallets come from a North American company called the Pallet Exchange Company, or PICO. These are companies that build and maintain pallets and then rent them out for different companies to use over and over again. In addition to their colors and company initials, these pallets should also have the other markings to indicate where they came from and how they were treated just like regular pallets. If you're doing any kind of woodworking with pallets, it's best to avoid these because they, first of all, are someone else's property, and second of all, that paint is really hard to get off. So next time you're at Costco or some other place that has lots of pallets, start taking a look at the markings. It's actually really interesting once you know what you're looking for. I hope that you found this video useful. Be sure to check out this playlist on pallet wood that I put together and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.